Venous return. This is the process of blood returning to the heart in order to increase stroke volume and eventually cardiac output because Starling's law states that we can't actually increase cardiac output until venous return increases first. Imagine it like a running tap. If you wanted to fill a bottle of water to the absolute brim, you can't speed that process up until you turn the tap on a lot faster. It doesn't matter how quickly you empty that water bottle, you're, only, you're always going to be emptying the same amount of fluid from that bottle. So if you increase the amount returning or you increase that tap flow or the water flow getting in, that's when you can start delivering more water or more blood around the body. So venous return must go up first in order for cardiac output to go up second. Now the way the body can actually achieve this is through a couple of mechanisms. Now the first is the skeletal muscular pump. If you take a muscle and contract it or you, you, you force movement to occur, at some point that muscle is actually going to expand in a certain space. And what that does, it, it compresses the blood, vessels, the blood vessels around it. And what that does, it almost squeezes the blood in the forward direction. In particular, in the veins, where we have the pocket valves, when that squeeze is actually implemented, because of the valves, the blood can't go down, or it can't go backwards through the veins of the venules. Instead, it has to go the other direction, which is back up towards the heart. So skeletal muscle pump, as we start to exercise, the compression of the blood vessels begins to move the blood backwards towards the heart, and the pocket valves are there to prevent backflow, which is the second point, pocket valves. These are there to prevent backflow. At any point, we can have 60 to 70% of our blood stored in our venules and our veins. The pocket valves are there to help assist with this. The blood sits and it rests there so that when this pumping action from the skeletal muscles or the smooth muscle, which I'll get onto in a second, as soon as these mechanisms start to kick in, the pocket valves serve the purpose of preventing that backflow. So it's almost like climbing a ladder. It's one step up and then pause, one step up and then pause. As blood gets pushed through this pocket valve, it can then pause and wait for the blood pressure to actually go or to increase again and force blood further along its journey back to the heart. Now the third is smooth muscle. Now in veins and venules in particular, there is a layer of thin muscle and when exercise begins to occur, what this thin muscle actually starts to do is contract ever so slightly. The activation of it can just help with that gradual squeezing, almost like squeezing out toothpaste from a tube. We're gradually moving blood back up towards the heart because again, blood pressure has dropped off because the distance it's now away from the heart and that initial contraction or systole phase. So we're using these three mechanisms so far, skeletal muscle pump, pocket valves, and smooth muscle to aid this process of just squashing blood back up through the venules, through the veins, towards the heart. The fourth is respiratory pump. Saying that it works the same way as skeletal muscle pump, as pressure builds in our thorax and abdomen, as we start to breathe in, our breathing rate begins to increase. The increase or increased volume of air that's actually contained within us and the rate at which we start to take that in, that's again going to force pressure onto the blood vessels surrounding those areas, causing that squash and squeezing in the direction of the heart. And the pocket valves are there to again prevent any backflow from occurring. Now the last one is atrial suction. As the heart ends its systole phase, it begins to return to its diastole or its, or its diastolic relaxed phase. So it begins to almost fill out. And if you imagine clasping your hands together and drawing them apart, you can actually hear air being sucked into your hands. The same process happens in your right atria, or where cardiac output almost originates, because without venous return returning to that right atria, we can't then process the blood up towards the lungs, back down, and then out of our left ventricle. So we have this atrial suction as we end systole phase, and it returns back to its relaxed phase, the atria increases in volume, which drops the pressure, and we know that mo or movement occurs from areas of high pressure, i.e. in the veins, to areas of low pressure, i.e. in this expanding right atria. So atrial suction, smooth muscle, respiratory pump, pocket valves, and skeletal muscle pump. These five mechanisms that we can use, or our body begins to utilize and activate when exercise begins and we need to increase venous return in order to increase stroke volume and cardiac output to help performance further on.